Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Master Lock number 7K ALF P493. This is a laminated steel pin tumbler padlock that is inch and an eighth wide, one and a half inch tall shackle, and it's keyed or combinated to the P493. They call it a control key, it's just the key that operates the lock. A couple of tiny little original key blanks here. They are stamped P493. That's what would be called an indirect code that would tell the factory what this key is cut to. There is a, uh, it's a code, but it's an indirect code, meaning that there's a reference manual that they would be able to, you know, uh, consult to know what those cuts were. I don't know what those cuts are. I don't have the master uh, system memorized. I don't know how many depths there are, what the increment is. Um, it does appear to be a four pin, a four chamber pin tumbler cylinder. And the reason they mentioned pin tumbler cylinder we'll go over in a moment. But let's just first start with some dimensional properties. When it comes to padlocks, the important uh, dimensional information is actually the inside of the shackle. This appears to be half inch. Then we know that they said it was inch and a half. I'm going to hold it. Uh, I'm going to hold it sideways to get a better idea. So they'd say, "Yeah, that is inch and a half." Okay. Then they give us the body size. That's where the inch and an eighth comes in. Thickness of the body. Looks like it's about nine sixteenths or so. They say they don't tell us the body size. The diameter of the shackle. 0 0.202, 0 0.202. So why are you possibly considering this padlock? Let's take a closer look at that right now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now you're looking at this padlock very likely because, well, first of all, it's inexpensive. Uh, and it will suit the dimensional requirements of what it is that you want to fit in here. A taller shackle height is going to be more conducive to stuffing more material into it. Like if you had to get around, let's say, uh, a chain link sort of application where you needed to span you know, a couple of items that were about an inch apart, you'd be able to do that with this sort of padlock. It also might be considered easier to use this when you've got a thicker chain that you might, you know, the, the the diameter of the links of the chain might be rather heavy for the caliber of this padlock. You might need to stuff two chain links in there that are, say, you know, three-eighths of an inch diameter. You'd want a longer shackle for that. You also might find that the design of the tool uh, lockup, the job box, the storage case that you have, the locker, whatever it is, has a shroud or a design such that you need a longer shackle so that you can still get the key inside the body easily. Whatever the reason might be, um, there you go. So we talked about this being a pin tumbler cylinder. There are different types of construction when it comes to padlocks. Bit, key, warded padlocks, very old, 16th, 17th, 18th century. There's lever tumbler construction that you're going to see in locks. Um, and then there is, of course, um, well, I said warded earlier, and that uh, warded is very common, uh, is a very common element still made today. I had said that that's old, but you can still get warded padlocks, and you'll know a warded key because it looks like um, a piece of metal that has been skeletonized or notched or cut out. It looks like the long beak of that particular fish um, that has teeth coming out on both sides of this long structure off the face of the fish. I don't remember the name, but it kind of reminds me of that sort of design. That's warded, meaning the key has been cut so that when you insert the key and you turn it, those ward cuts, those cuts in the key will bypass the wards. The ward is a blockage. A key is meant to work around that blockage. Um, Lever tumblers, they, which is a different construction type of lock. They mentioned pin tumbler with this lock, and I think what they're trying to say is, hey, this isn't an inexpensive, real cheapy, warded padlock. This is pin tumbler construction. <coughs> Forgive me. <coughs> Forgive me. 
that would definitely be considered a higher caliber type of construction over the cylinder. Uh, the pin tumbler cylinder was patented by Linus Yale in the mid uh, 19th century, about 1860 or so. I don't recall the exact date on the patent. Um, he didn't invent it, and it is the same person, Linus Yale Jr., in fact. Yale Lock Company was founded by him. Um, his father, uh, fun fact, was a prestigious lock manufacturer in his own right, but focused on bank and vault doors. The development of the United States in the 19th century was such that in the early part, you didn't have a lot of locks because there wasn't stuff to lock up. All the way to the Industrial Revolution, all the way through 1840, 1850, with the decline of the um, e economy, there were some severe uh, recessions during that period. The Civil War, of course, gave birth to, um, or bolstered, I might say, you know, the continual movement of um, industrialization. Well, with industrialization came wealth. With wealth came material items, and with material items came a need to lock stuff up. The pin tumbler was a superior construction um, when it came to locking stuff up in general, certainly over warded construction. Having said that, you'll have lever tumbler locks, which is a different construction altogether, guarding our safe deposit box boxes. You will have a warded key, a flat steel key that has notches on it. Well, those notches are meant to uh, work in conjunction with the inner construction of the lock. And what's not cut away will actually drive the lever tumblers themselves. So lever tumbler is a very old technology, definitely predates the pin tumbler cylinder, um, and is used on highly secure applications. But you'll generally have th the construction of a lever tumbler be less conducive to the extreme compact design of this type of padlock. Anyway. This is called laminated steel. There are literally plates of steel here that are laminated, meaning they are placed on top of each other. They are then riveted down to each other. And the inside of these plates is literally machined so that your cylinder can fit inside of there. This cap is put down, it's riveted together. You have this plastic bump guard that's here as well to keep that from really knocking up the laminated plates at the bottom. Uh, the keys work uh, fine and smooth. There you go. Let's switch to the screen view now and let's take a closer look at some of the supporting documentation. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are indeed looking at. Let's take a look at some photographs that we have. Here is the box and the label on the box. Here is our uh, the contents of the box close-up of the padlock, the side view, the underside of it, and then a close-up of the broaching of the cylinder plug that's here. It's going to be a ball bearing in here that when you turn the key it will allow that ball bearing to move over so that the shackle can pop out. It's spring biased. There's, you know, a padlock shackle will pop out. It's spring biased under the one side. And then your two keys shown from each side. Very simple milling to the profile of the keys, um, as you can see here. Okay, pretty typical. Now, the extended description down below, let's take a look at that. Laminated steel pin tumbler lock, they give us the dimensions. Dual locking levers provide pry resistance. Um, I can't tell you what that means uh, as it relates to this padlock. What I normally notice that as is you'll have a cutout here as well, and there'll be two bearings that will seat in the shackle. I don't see that design here, but I could be wrong. Um, so at this moment, I'm going to have to leave that a professional curiosity as to if that applies to this. Non-rekeyable four pin W7. Let's remember W7. Cylinder prevents picking. Yeah, the pin tumbler cylinder is a more secure cylinder, as we said. It's non-rekeyable because you can't take this padlock apart. That's the problem. There's no way to get that cylinder out of here. 
without, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can do it. You can grind these rivets off, pull that plate out, get that cylinder out, assuming it can be rekeyed, and then put it all back together and re-rivet everything. I know padlock, uh, pardon me, I know locksmiths uh, do that sort of work. <clears throat> Your control key or just the, the, the key itself. Sold as each when you buy one, we'll ship you one. Let's click the link here to the product catalog. All right, that's literally going to be the product catalog. Um, let's see if we can find just a cut sheet of this item. So this is a number seven padlock. It's important to note that. Um, okay, here we go. The number seven. Yeah, that's a single locking lever is what that is. I'm going to correct that right now. Okay, I have updated that to single locking lever. And that's our number seven. Let's see if we can find that. If there's any other reference to it. Yeah, I don't see that there really is. Um, yeah, unfortunately there's not a lot to say about this type of um, inexpensive padlock, so to speak. I'm going to have this added as a product, uh, as a cut sheet actually, to this uh, item, and we'll do that now. All right, now there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page, as seen here. We can click on uh, this item. We can pull up um, not only all of the master products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, as seen here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as link to the full product catalog. I'd mentioned to remember that W7. Let's take a look at the master lock keys and keyways. Let's do a control F for W7. And here we go. Shows a W700. This does not show us what we want to see at all. It's not here. We've got a four pin, we know that, or at least I know that. Um, and I don't see it listed here. Very interesting. Okay, so they don't have that listed, and that's not unusual because, well, because frankly, they don't list everything. I'm going to go over to the Kaba Ilko catalog in our site for key blanks. We're going to let that load. This is almost 500 pages of key blank related material. Let's type in master and let's see what we can come up with. Should be lots of matches for that. There we go. Um, okay, so now it's alphabetical is what I should be saying. Forgive me. Uh, let's take a look. Kind of memorize that square rectangular type of profile. This is what we're looking at when we look down into the cylinder. If anything, it looks like this M2. And the head of the key certainly looks exactly correct. Looking at other key blanks, just sorting it out by the shape of the bow first. Yeah, I'm tempted to say that it is that M2. It certainly looks like it. Yeah, there isn't an M7, which I'm just guessing as to what that might be. But this M2... Scrolling through the cross-reference that's here as well. Yeah, I don't see any other possible good matches for this. And there's lots of M2. So it could have been that. Uh, frankly, it could certainly have been that match that we had found um, earlier.
right here. I'm tempted to say that that's it. Um, looking at my key blank, I'm almost convinced that that would be it. So why they don't list it in the keys and keyways is beyond me. However, um, what we can most definitely do is reach out to the factory and ask them for the key blank for this, and they will oblige. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now in conclusion, if you have any questions on the master number seven, it's K-A-L-F uh, in a P493 control key or any other master padlock, please feel free to reach out to us. Their tech support people are indeed pretty easy to work with, meaning they're responsive and they understand their product line. They can speak to locksmiths using locksmiths uh, terminology, their language at a more technical level. And I've always appreciated speaking to them because I could tell they understand their product line. Frankly, it just makes finding the answer an easier process to, so to them for that, I say thank you. Any questions on this number seven padlock or any other master product, please feel free to reach out to us and thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.